Andrew Jenkins. Minister, um, we saw what happened yesterday in the Finance Bill. Um, some of our colleagues trying to stop um, you know, preparations and money going into no deal. I just want to start by completely agreeing with you. Um, it's probably maybe the, the only time I will in the committee, but <laughs> agreeing with you, you know, it would be irresponsible of government to not prepare for um, um, no deal. Um, Minister, would you agree that by taking no deal off the table, it actually weakens our hands in negotiations with the EU? I would, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, um, now, should the Prime Minister's deal next week um, fall, um, how many times do you estimate um, it being brought back to the House? I have not seen any plans that suggest it would be brought back to the House. Okay. That's good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I was looking at um, what the Prime Minister said on Andrew Marr um, earlier on in the week. That, you know, um, she, she wouldn't Forgive me for not watching the no. Marr okay. <laughs> or, or listening to the Today programme, obviously. Absolutely. You know, completely out of touch. Um, should the Prime Minister's um, deal fall next week, um, <coughs> is the government um, going to ramp up the fear-mongering surrounding no deal? I don't think the government's been fear-mongering in the slightest. There are some consequences for us leaving without a deal that we have to prepare for. And I'd like to think that, when well, given the opportunity, I've articulated them in a calm and relatively precise manner without scaring too many horses, but giving a level of understanding of the amount of work that has had to go in to prepare for a no deal. I agree with you, Minister, that you, um, you know, you yourself, because I know as a Brexiteer that you probably haven't gone down that route, but I'm, I'm probably talking about the Treasury, actually. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I disagree. I, th I think the government has actually handled its no deal preparation very responsibly. Okay. Um, Monday's no deal trip war game in Kent, where 100 lorries drove up and down the motorway. Um, was this a success and what did it teach us about leaving under WTO rules? Um, we're going to talk, talk as much about leaving under WTO rules, but it was a success. Um, there, there's a, uh, the government works with a body called the Kent, Re Kent Resilience Forum, and um, should there be issues, actually, this, whether it's a deal or no deal um, uh, uh, when we leave, there could easily still be problems with uh, strikes and weather problems in the short straits that uh, we would need to prepare for as a government. Um, this was a way of um, finding out um, there were enough lorries, and I believe one dump truck, but uh, um, uh, present for us to measure the flows that, that we could, uh, of traffic that you could send out onto the A road that connected where they were parked up to the port, um, the timings and what that might do to, to traffic. So yes, it was a success. Now, it's been um, two and a half years since um, the British people voted to leave. Now, is it a coincidence that this no deal war game that took place this week it actually took place before the Prime Minister's vote next week on the withdrawal deal? Why did it not take place you know, months ago or even a year ago? Why is um, it just is it a coincidence? Uh, I, yeah, it is a coincidence. Okay. Right, thank you. Um, and regarding your previous answer, um, with regards to Calais, that the EU could enforce more strident checks if they wanted to. Um, wouldn't you agree that that would be counterproductive because um, we could do the same with their goods, what comes into the UK as well? Um, it would so be, be counterproductive for both sides. It would, um, as, as someone, as, as I mentioned earlier, I used to import and wholesale a huge amount of produce, fresh produce, uh, that used uh, the short straits. And I know um, that at that time of year, a huge number of the lorries coming into the country contain fresh produce um, from uh, French farmers, Italian farmers, Portuguese, Spanish, not so much the Dutch and Belgians because they also use other routes. But, um, and uh, it would be in nobody's interest yes. to impose uh, any extra checks. And, and finally, Minister, um, I was in Kenya back in July and they uh, export flowers um, under WTO rules. Um, so can you see any position where, you know, if they can do it easily enough, um, um, you know, get to, through um, our, our checks and still get um, goods to us on time, which has got a short shelf life, can you realistically honestly see any problems if we leave on WTO? I, I also used to import um, fresh produce from around the globe. Yes. and. Um, it is eminently doable in good time for it to have a long shelf, uh, fresh produce to have a long shelf life in the United Kingdom 
from other countries outside the European Union. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, thank you.